Hey guys, good day, and thank you for coming back to the next video. As I promised on an earlier video, I want to show something that um, I sort of found in the book of Leviticus. Um, the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, is a, a comprehensive description of what God refers to as his appointments for his covenant people. And I know Christians, um, for the most part, want to refer to these as, well, those are those Jewish feasts. And they want to just blow them off and sort of not give them really the time of day. But I want to speak about these these feasts in uh, in detail. And th there's some words that get used, there's some Hebrew words we're going to look at real quick, that are strewn about. And I, I think the way that these Hebrew words are used give us insight into um, the real meaning behind these feasts. Um, so th th to start off with, you know, when you go to Leviticus 23, it's in Passover, Feast of First Fruits, and weeks and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> people refer to these as the seven feasts of the Lord. And But if we look at the words, the Hebrew words that are used, th these are all appointments. They're called moeds. That's the Hebrew word. Okay, And feast is this Strong's 2282. Every one of these is not a feast. But everyone's an appointment. So basically what these are is, is that God himself has made like a doctor's appointment. You go to your doctor and you say, okay, you, you go for a, a physical and he says, okay, next year you're going to come back at the same time for an appointment. That's essentially what this is. God has made appointments that we could call the appointed time. The word moed means appointed time, place, or meeting. Where God wants you there to do whatever he wants you to do, and he describes what he wants. So for the most part, Christians don't adhere to these things, but but there's still some truth buried in there. I'm not advocating we follow these. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the details here, and we'll see what we should or should not do. All right. Okay, so uh, Leviticus 23 wants to speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are my appointments of the Lord, and you shall proclaim them as holy convocations. They are my appointments. So let's look at the words here. The appointment, Moed, we talked about that. Convocation, Mirkwa, Strong's 4744. Four, it's an assembly, like a formal assembly, or it's also a rehearsal gathering. That's the kicker. Rehearsal part. It's like a it's like you go to a rehearsal dinner you have a wedding rehearsal the day before the actual wedding. So these things are like practiced rehearsals. But they're at an appointed time. Because one day there's going to be the big show. And we can talk about that. Okay, so the first one's Passover. Passover was fulfilled by Jesus in Isaiah 28 AD. That's my thought on it. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay, this is verse 4. It speaks about this. In the first month, Okay, uh, on the 14th day of the month, you know, you, you, you twilight, you have the Lord's Passover, you kill the Passover lamb. They did that for, what, 1,400 years? And then Jesus shows up, then they kill him. And he was the final lamb. So we don't do Passover anymore. We don't need to. We don't need to re-crucify Jesus anymore. Christians do not need to take part in a Passover Seder. They can, if they want, to a certain degree, just to look at it as something that was done. But that's not what we're there for. We're there for the Feast of First Fruits and to celebrate Resurrection morning. The idea that we would participate in Passover seders is, it's like, it's like going back to rotten food and eating it over again. We, don't, we shouldn't be doing that. Now, on the 15th day, there's the, what they call the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, this is what I want to show you that's interesting. Passover is not called a feast. There's no word about feast in here. Now, but the, the unleavened bread, the word feast is used. And that's what a festive gathering is. So feast is green. Strong's 2282. It is chag. And then there's a solemn rest, which is this Shabbathon, which is a solemn rest. It's like a Sabbath. Okay? And so they're all a little bit different. Passover doesn't call for a solemn rest. Passover calls for a convocation, a rehearsal. So Passover was rehearsed. Killing the, the lamb was rehearsed. But it, that's it. You're done with it. 
The Feast of Unleavened Bread is a feast. It's a festival gathering only on the first day. On the first day, you should hold a convocation. Okay? And on the seventh day, hold a convocation. All right, this is another one that's really... the fe It's not even the Feast... I mean, let me just delete this. It's not the Feast of First Fruits. When you read about First Fruits, the word feast isn't even in the text. It's not. And look look what also it says. It says that this is a statute forever throughout your generations. So first fruits is a statute to be remembered and celebrated forever. But we're not but look up here for Passover. You don't see that same language in here. We're not going to be forever a statute in our generations. For Passover, because we're not going to keep killing the Passover lamb. See, th there is things like that buried in all of these uh, sections of this um, of this chapter. I have it summarized at the end. Okay, so the feast of first fruits. Sorry, I, I screwed up. First fruits, a convo, uh, an appointment. So they're all appointments. They're all seven appointments, but they're not all feasts. That's the point I was getting at here earlier. All right. I even did it again. It's not the Feast of Weeks. It's just weeks. Pentecost. Here's Pentecost here. I got the text right here. You bring in the first fruits of the Lord. It's a convocation, a formal rehearsal gathering. And it's a statute that will be done forever. But it doesn't say that it's a feast. It doesn't say it in there. Like it says up here, for unleavened bread, it's a feast on unleavened bread. It's a festival gathering. See, these things are all a little different. And it's not what you think. Okay, here's the trumpets. Here, I did it again. I'm calling it the Feast of Trumpets. Here's trumpets. It, it says it's a solemn rest. It's a convocation, a formal rehearsal gathering. But it doesn't say feast. It's not a celebratory feast. See the green. I have it labeled here. The green up here. And see when you read it in the English. I, I have to admit. I went through. This is the ESV. And it calls everything feast. But it doesn't say feast in the Hebrew. I fixed it at a few places. Okay. So here's trumpets. Trumpets is the strangest one of them all. It just says. It doesn't really say why you're doing it. It just says it's a memorial of remembrance of the blasting of trumpets. But it doesn't say what you're blasting the trumpets for. Now, we all think it might be some type of resurrection. It's already been passed this year. But anyway, trumpets is not a feast. It's a solemn gathering where you rest. Doesn't say anything about a festival gathering there. Okay, Day of Atonement. Same thing. It's not a feast. Now, it's a appointment. It's an appointed time. It's a moed, but it's not a feast. The, the, look, in here, here it says it's a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwelling places. So we're going to be celebrating the Day of Atonement in the millennium. It's a statute forever. That's what it says. You know, how do you argue with that? <laughs> it's a solemn rest. So it's a convocation, formal rehearsal gathering, and it's a solemn rest. It's not a festive gathering. Okay? Then you get to the feast, that's correct, the feast of tabernacles. And what does it say? It says on the 15th day of the month, for seven days, you have a festive gathering, a feast of booths, tabernacles. It's a convocation, a formal rehearsal dinner, a formal rehearsal. Seven days you do this. And then on the eighth day, you have a solemn rest. And then there's a summary. This is where it gets really weird, guys. Follow me with what I'm going to say here in the next few minutes, okay? Then we get to chapter, verse 37. These are the appointments the appointed time and place of the Lord, which you shall proclaim as times, as convocations, formal rehearsal gatherings. Okay? So it's, it's, it's summarized. It says, these seven appointments 
above, you know, our convocations, appointments. Okay, then we, I, I put a dark line in here. This is where it gets really weird. I've never seen this explained before. I just stumbled onto it the other day. It starts all over again. Notice, yeah, it, and it just starts talking about another event that happens to be on the same date as the Feast of Tabernacles. And let's see, let's, let's read the text. On the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the produce of the land. What does that sound like? Could that be the... That to me sounds like there's going to be some time that we're going to gather up all the fruit of the land and we're going to have a festive gathering for seven days. So look how it describes this. It says, this is a feast of the Lord seven days. Up here, it says, this is a feast of booths to the Lord. So this is like a, this feast doesn't have a name other than the fact that it's a festive gathering to the Lord. And on the first day is a solemn rest, and on the eighth day a solemn rest. But this is where we get the truth here, I think. And you shall take on the first day, first day, 15th day, the fruit of the splendid trees, the branches, the palms, the boughs of the leafy trees, the willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall celebrate a feast for seven days. It's a statute forever throughout your generations. Okay? Then it refers to booths again. Now, is this just another version of the booths? Why wasn't this up there? Why didn't we have the fruit, the, the fruit gathering in there? It, this is like a an eighth feast. That's the feast of fruit gathering, which happens to be at the same time as the feast of tabernacles. And the difference is here: it's going to be a statute forever throughout your generations. When up here, tabernacles isn't. So, I look at this like, this to me is the feast, this is the end time gathering of everything. This is what we're getting ready, we haven't had this for real yet. But we're going to when we gather up all the fruit. Now, if you go into like Isaiah 17, after the Damascus things, it mentions about gathering the fruit from trees. To me, this 40, verse 40, is a reference to going out and gathering up all of um the souls at the end of the age. And there's going to be a seven day. You do it on the first day. And you shall take on the first day, the 15th day. That's like that's like there's going to be a rapture on the 15th day of the seventh month. And bring in all the fruit. Remember John 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I choose you to be fruit gatherers, to go out and gather fruit for me. That's what the harvest workers are going to be doing. Okay, so... To make this easier to read, I, I made a summary of this. I'm going to quickly go through it. All right. So Passover, first month, 14 days, a feast, festive gathering. Okay, first off, all of these are appointments. Okay. Unleavened bread, it's a feast and a rehearsal dinner. Rehearsal, rather. Then you have no gatherings. You eat unleavened bread in this 16th to 20th day. Then you have another formal rehearsal gathering on the 21st day. First fruits has no gatherings. The feast... First fruits, the moed, the appointment, has no gatherings. It's not a feast, it's not a convocation, it's not nothing. But look what it says. It's a statute forever. So forever and ever and ever, we're going to remember that Jesus was the first fruits. But we're not going to be doing these Passover and unleavened bread because Jesus already fulfilled that. We're not going to keep you know, putting Jesus back in the ground and eating unleavened bread. We don't need to do that forever. But we're going to be celebrating Resurrection Sunday forever. Pentecost, it's a convocation, a gathering, and it's going to be celebrated forever. We're going to celebrate the birthday of the church forever and ever and ever. Okay? Blast of trumpets, it's a solemn rest and a convocation. We're not going to be, we're not going to be celebrating it in the millennium. Doesn't say it. Day of atonement, convocation, solemn rest. It's a statute forever. Forever and ever and ever. We're going to be celebrating this Day of Atonement thing in the millennium. 
Then we get to Tabernacles. It's a feast on the first day, convocation, a festive gathering for their other days. Then we got a convocation, a mother feast. Then we got the eighth day, a solemn rest on the eighth day. But it's not a statute forever. Then we get down to this, I said, eighth. I call it a feast of the Lord. After the fruit has been gathered, raptured. Fifteenth day of feast, solemn rest. See, tabernacles, look, look at tabernacles, okay? The fifteenth day, it's a, it's a festive gathering and a rehearsal, okay? The feast of the Lord for this fruit gathering thing, it's a celebrated feast, a festive gathering, and then it's a solemn rest. It doesn't say solemn rest up here. So you can't say that this number seven thing and this number eight thing are the same thing. They're not. One occurs after the fruit has been gathered and raptured. And we have a solemn rest. Yeah, let me let me show you something here. Solemn rest after the after the fruit has been gathered. Let's go to the Bible and go to a um, Isaiah fifty seven which is the rapture, the taking away of the people. Now, this gets confusing here. The righteous man perishes. I believe that the dead in Christ are going to drop dead in front of you. These righteous men are this dead in Christ. They're going to drop dead. No one lays it to heart. No one recognizes it because I think the cosmic event is happening. Then it says, devout men, godly, this means godly people are taken away. This is the, the, the main group leaving while nobody understands where they went. Then it says the righteous man, right? The righteous man is taken away from the calamity. He goes first. He drops dead, dead in Christ, his spirit's taken. He enters peace. They, the godly people, that are taken away, no one understands, they rest in their beds, who walk in uprightness. Let me get a different translation here. If I can find the godly people one. Um, that's, that's not good. Here's the righteous man perishes. No one takes it heart. Loyal people are gathered together. No one understands. The righteous man, uh, they find peace. Well, they rest on their beds. So what I'm getting at is here is when I saw that thing about resting, I think it's NASB. It says it really nicely. Um, see, these are all a little bit different. Let's look at the King James. The King James says, The righteous perish, no one lays to heart. Merciful men, it's re really it's godly people, that's what I've seen, are taken away. Remember Jesus says, If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me in my Father's house. Or Luke 17, verse 34, One will be taken, one will be left. One in the field, one taken, one left. The disciples say, where, Lord? He says, where the body of believers are gathered. Where the body of believers are, the eagles, those escape pods will be gathering. Okay, sorry. But anyway, godly people are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away. That's it's not a good translation. I've, just, I've looked at this so many times. Maybe it's the NLT that says it best. Uh, godly often, uh, no one seemed, no, that's, that's even worse. <laughs> Sorry. It was, I think it was, um, let's look at the NASB. It's the same thing, yeah. The righteous man perishes, devout men, it's not just men, it's people, are taken away while no one understands. This right here is a departure rapture. And the people left behind me, like, where did they go? It all makes sense. They rest on their beds. What I'm getting to is they're resting on their beds, and that's why this feast that occurs after the fruit's been taken, that's why there's this solemn rest here, which is the 15th day of the seventh month. Okay, then there's a festival gathering, festival gathering for a bunch of days, and then there's another solemn rest. It's a statute forever and ever and ever. Okay, so look at this festival gathering. That's what Hebrews 12 speaks about that. Jeremiah 31 speaks about that. 
All right. So the whole point here of me doing this video to begin with is to show you the differences in this set of verses here. It's right here. Okay. These sets of verses down to here. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is this feast of the Lord after the fruit has been gathered that we will remember and do forever and ever and ever. To me, this feast is, is a one-time thing. So, oh, and look, it's not a rehearsal. See, this one's not a rehearsal. It's not even an appointment. Oh, I'm sorry, it's an appointment, but it, it's nothing but a festive gathering with a little rest mixed in. It's not a rehearsal. See, why is this rehearsed and this not rehearsed? It, it's, there's got to be truth buried in there. How do you rehearse uh, a, a harvest at the end of the age of people? You don't do that. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, so back to the summary. You can see what we're going to be doing into the millennium. We're going to be remembering and celebrating the Resurrection Sunday. We're going to be remembering and celebrating the birth of the day of the church, Pentecost. We're going to be remembering and celebrating the Feast of the Day of Atonement. And we're going to be remembering and celebrating the, um, the harvest season, the harvest at the end of the age that Jesus speaks about. So, but we're not going to be having Seder meals and unleavened bread stuff. We're not going to be doing that. Okay. All right. I think that's it, guys. You can download this document. And uh, with that, have a great day and God bless you.